G'day guys and welcome to another episode of the Aussie Dividend Machine. In this episode, let's check out three stocks that are currently on my ASX radar. Companies that appear on my radar are those that I think represent good value either now or in the near future. Well, let's get straight into it, starting with company number one. So the first company I wanted to talk about is called Adbri or Adelaide Brighton. Adelaide Brighton is a company that supplies materials that support both the construction sector and also the mining sector. They're major manufacturers of a product called Lime, and Lime is used in concrete, in mortar, in a variety of different applications. In 2019, they had a pretty bad year. Um, there was a massive drop in residential construction growth um, on the eastern seaboard of Australia. This led to lower revenue than usual and their share price took a bit of a hit. From this point, the share price has further fallen um, due to inactivity in the construction sector. We're seeing this get even worse due to COVID-19 um, and I don't think it's bottomed out just yet. I think with the new stage four restrictions being introduced in some parts of Victoria, we'll see revenue for Adbri fall even further and hence the share price I think will continue to drop. I think at the moment um, and going into the future, the price of this stock represents great value. I think coming out of this COVID-19 crisis, we're gonna see increased expenditure from the government on infrastructure projects. And I know they're also prioritizing um, planning permit approvals. All in all, this means there's going to be an increase in construction activity coming up in 2021. This is the perfect recipe for Adbri, who supplies materials to this industry. I think in 2021 and going forward, we can expect some really good growth out of Adbri. So at the moment, Adbri is on my watch and wait list. I don't think the full damage of the coronavirus situation has impacted them just yet. So I would expect their share price to continue to fall a bit before the growth starts to pick up. Okay, so second on my list is a company called InvoCare. InvoCare is a company that operates in the funeral sector of the market. Whilst this is pretty grim business, uh, it is definitely profitable. In 2018-2019, we saw a reduction in the death rates in Australia, and hence InvoCare's revenue took a bit of a hit. I've mentioned in some of my other videos how I think the healthcare sector might prove um, some good value at the moment, considering some of these listed aged care providers have taken pretty big hits to their share price because of the COVID-19 debacle we've had in Australia. If you want to know more about that, just watch my latest weekly portfolio update. I'll put a link up on screen. So whilst InvoCare is not an aged care provider, they are in a related stream of work. I think at the moment, I'm hesitant to look at companies like Estia or Japara, which are aged care providers. Um, I think there's definitely a bit of risk there still considering the investigations that are ongoing into how those companies have handled the COVID-19 pandemic. I've got a bit of a concern that these companies won't come out in front um, after all this is over. Uh, their potential recovery may not be as strong as some people might think. However, we do have an aging population and with that, the projected death rate in Australia is expected to rise. This is good news for InvoCare because that's their primary business. Um, the higher the death rate, essentially, the more revenue they bring in. Looking at InvoCare's financials, their free cash flow position is actually negative at the moment. Looking into their annual report, we can see they've been doing a lot of investment in acquisitions of similar businesses, but also doing upgrades to their existing assets. They've stated in the report that they're planning to wind down all the renovations they've been doing to their funeral centres, so we can see that free cash flow position should improve in the next 12 months. In addition, their share price is looking pretty good at the moment. It's taken a hit because of the COVID-19 crisis and it remains still quite good value. For this reason, I think InvoCare is an upcoming purchase for me. Um, I'll continue to look into the company a bit more, but for now, I think they do represent great value and they've got good growth prospects going into the future. The third company on my list is a little one from left field. It's called Marley Spoon. A lot of you may have tried uh, food delivery services like Uber Eats or Deliveroo or similar. There are two food companies that come to mind that do a food delivery service that's a little bit different. These two companies are HelloFresh and Marley Spoon. They both offer a very similar service, uh, which is fresh food delivery. You prepare the food at home yourself 
and they give you the exact portions required to cook a meal. The benefit of this is not deciding what to cook. They tell you what to cook or you can choose before you buy and they provide recipe cards that tell you um, how to use the fresh ingredients they've delivered to make your meal. The success of HelloFresh has been extraordinary. I'll put up their share price up on screen. You can see the high growth levels that they've been able to achieve. Now HelloFresh is a German company Marley Spoon is an Australian company. Now Marley Spoon has only been going for a few years, but they are seeing growth pick up. At the moment, their share price is quite low. And I think if Marley Spoon is a good product and can compete with HelloFresh, I can see a huge potential for growth. The three reasons I really like Marley Spoon are the following. Number one, they offer no contact delivery. With the ongoing pandemic, people prefer to have things delivered rather than having to go out and about and purchase food. Factor number two is the competition. There's pretty low competition for Marley Spoon at the moment. They've got a strong competitor in HelloFresh, but as far as I'm aware, there's no other fresh food delivery service that is on the same level as these guys. Number three reason why I really like Marley Spoon's prospects is that they have price discrimination within their company structure. Marley Spoon has a division or a side company called Dinnerly. Dinnerly offers the same service, but at a much lower price point. They achieve this by having less complicated meals with less ingredients, and that allows them to reduce the cost as well as their packaging is not quite as high end. I think these three fundamentals put Marley Spoon in a great spot for really strong future growth. So what's my position on Marley Spoon? Well, I need a little bit of confidence in the product. To do this, I've actually ordered a box of Marley Spoon, which will be coming next week. I really wanna test and try this product to see if it's the real deal and to see if it's something I'd continue to purchase. If it is good, well, you can bet I'll be buying some shares in Marley Spoon. Well guys, thanks for watching the video. If you've got any questions about the companies we've just spoken about, make sure to leave a comment below. Happy to answer any queries you might have. I'd also like to know what stocks maybe you've got on your radar let me know in the comments below. Well guys, until the next one, see you later, stay safe and cheers.